I'm here with Tori. He's going to talk to us about herself. I'm Tori, I'm 20 and I'm from Liverpool. Um, I'm currently doing criminal law at the Uni of Leeds and I used to be 17 stone. So you used to be 17 stone, yeah. so what changed in that to make you lose all that weight? Um, I was in year 11 in school and I was getting ready for my prom and I turned around to my mum and said I want, really want to look nice for my prom and I went into a dress shop and tried on a size 24 prom dress and the zip burst and I remember being in the changing rooms crying my eyes out thinking like something's just got to change, like I can't go on like this anymore. What did you do to make that change? Um, I started just making like very small changes, I didn't want it. I've tried every diet under the book and I never ever stuck to it so I just started like substituting chocolate like big chocolate bars for a chocolate biscuit or mm -hmm. and then once I'd started doing that I'd make more changes so instead of a chocolate biscuit it'd be a piece of fruit or in no fizzy drinks and have water instead so it was just implementing little things mm -hmm. towards a lifestyle rather than a diet. Mm -hmm. Have you stuck to them sort of little things or have you now went on a diet plan or um, still not a diet? I mean my motto is We've only got one life, just live it. And I know for a fact that if I was on a strict diet plan, mm -hmm. I wouldn't really enjoy myself because that was the problem with losing a lot of weight. I went too far at the other end of the scale and I went down to seven and a half stone. So I was tiny mm -hmm. um, and I was more upset being small than That's I was small. when I was big. Yeah, because it was just so controlling over my life. So now I just I try and stick to like 80-20. I try and be as healthy as I can, but I'd never let Diet stopped me from living Still my life. Yeah. And all that. Good. How have you been managing with this um, entire COVID pandemic? Um, it's been a change massively. Like going from going to the gym six times a week to doing absolutely nothing. But it's brought me closer with my family because me, my dad, and my sister do home workouts now, which has been really fun. And I'm less strict on myself, and it's been really nice just not having to work out all the time yeah. and like now going to see friends it's just been really good so i think lockdown's done me a little bit good to me but yeah exactly no that's great to hear um so with the home workouts that you do with your family yeah how often do you do them compared to when you were at the gym um or when you were at the gym we do a thing have you heard of insanity like p90x i think so is that the, the joe bishop guy sean t sean, his name yeah. is um so we do that at least like three, four times a week, but because it's really heavily cardio based, like after two times you're written off and you need a day off. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, have you got any sort of aspirational goals or is it just like you said to maintain that sort of balance of being as big and as small as you have been? My goal at the minute is just to feel comfortable in my body and it's mm -hmm. more focused on like the mental aspect and more accepting myself now because it's like, mm -hmm. I've been the same weight as I, I've been, I've been a similar weight for like the last two years but it's like what's changed really has just been more self acceptance and that's yeah. kind of like what I want to share with other people because it's honestly made such mm -hmm. a difference. What are you doing to sort of share that with other people? Um, I've been doing quite a lot of Instagram posts to try and like promote my message to young girls so like a couple of weeks ago I did a post about my stretch marks and like since losing all the weight I've got like excess skin and stuff but like I think that's what personally makes me mm -hmm. unique and different and that nobody should feel like oh I don't look like Kendall Jenner all the time so therefore yeah. I'm like nobody looks like that all the time like even I'm, she doesn't look yeah, like that exactly, all the time yeah like, exactly and especially a lot of celebrities have been going with this movement like Demi Lovato showing this his cellulite and their stretch mm -hmm. marks and I think it's just so empowering for women so that's why I kind of want to like share my bit yeah. as well. So you want a lot more sort of them um, realistic bodies yeah, compared definitely. to the Instagram influencers? Definitely and I think society is changing because I've seen a lot more campaigns now where mm -hmm. like pretty little thing the shop has now um, stretch marks on their, camp on their website and I think that's just it's helping so many young girls mm -hmm. not feel as if they're good enough really and I think it's just making a big difference in that sense. Yeah. Um, I know you went from Miss Liverpool, Liverpool was it? Yeah. How did that go for you? Um, I'm in the final, I'm in the top four. Brilliant. Of Miss, uh, Miss Liverpool. Liverpool, so there's going to be a pageant at the end of August. 
which is really so exciting. Long and um, yeah, because social distancing's been is they're thinking about reducing it to one meter, aren't they? Yeah. So hopefully, hopefully by August, September, then everything will be good. Good. And then would you go on to like Miss England or Miss Universe? Or if you go on, if you win the Miss Liverpool pageant, you get a place in the final in Miss England, which oh. is so near. It's so exciting. <laughs> it's absolutely mad thinking that I could be in Miss, Next England. Miss England. Yeah. <laughs> what do you have to do for them sort of like pageants and stuff? Like I've seen like a few sort of clips yeah. online, but what do you exactly have to do? Well, the process this year has been a lot different, obviously, because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So. I had to do like an online submission, which was like an introduction, a catwalk, which was really awkward. <laughs> I had to practice it for days in my back garden. <laughs> um, and then like, it was optional to do like a talent, mm -hmm. but I didn't. I was gonna make cakes, but I thought, so that's not a talent really, is it? <laughs> Can you do that? I, I would like to say that. There was me. one girl that made cakes, and I was just, I was just like, oh, I should have done that now. <laughs> um, and then there was an online vote. So then now we're all in the top four. Oh, yeah. Good. Uh, I wish you the very best one. Thank you. Um, so you touched a bit earlier on um, sort of the mental aspect of it. Yeah. What exactly is your experiences with mental health that you're open to share? Um, well, when I was a bigger girl, I obviously I had really bad anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. um, school was a nightmare. Just, and I feel like a lot of girls can relate to that where you just feel like you don't fit in. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the girls were talking about boys and clothes and things like that, no boys wanted to talk to me. <laughs> um, I couldn't fit into the same clothes as all the other girls. They were all going around in Topshop and I had to go in Forever 21 plus section or like, I remember buying my first pair of jeans at 16. Never owned a pair of jeans before. Really? Yeah, so it was really hard feeling like you didn't fit in. But then when I started losing more weight, my anxiety kind of picked up again because mm -hmm. I, kind of, I struggled for a long time with body dysmorphia which is why I went so small on the other side because I still saw the bigger girl in the mirror mm -hmm. and it's something I've struggled with up until recently really because it's been so long it's kind of taken me all those years all to get years. adjusted to what I've seen in the mirror. So how many years has it been like exactly for you since the first initial I need to change? Yeah. Well that was when I was 16 and I'm 21 in a month today. So, <laughs> so that's what four or five years. Four or five years. Yeah, which is mental to think. <laughs> Do you think you're still affected by the dis body dysmorphia? I or mean, have you sort of. I feel like everybody kind of struggles with it, really. But I feel like it's just on different. What's the word? Levels. Different levels, yeah. Um, because I feel like everybody does have their down days where they look in the mirror and go like. Or like girls like when they're bloated or like do you know what I mean? Um but it's definitely less than what it used to be and I feel like mm -hmm. that's because I've been working on more self love mm -hmm. than improving. Trying to that idea yeah, first. definitely. I think that's what is good about it because there's a lot of people who especially with natural filters, so yeah. naturally you'll walk into like the bathroom for example. Yeah. And the lighting's always better in the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> so it sort of gives you even you in real life without a camera out that phone that sort of fake idea of what you look like. And Definitely. by all means you look exactly how you look in the mirror. But how you see yourself is different. Some days you are feeling a lot better. Yeah. And you think you look a lot better. And some other days, you know, you, you might not, your hair might be a bit flat or yeah. a bit scraggly, so you're like, oh look at me. I'm, mm. Yeah. So yeah, it's good that you're posting and um, promoting a lot more of this sort of yeah. just acceptance of your body as a whole. Yeah, and it's like, I, I, I want to show girls that it's okay not to feel mm -hmm. amazing all the time. I know I don't, I mean, and I feel like people always think losing weight or toning up or going to the gym will change everything and it will fix everything. But in reality, I feel like it always starts within. Like, mm -hmm. I know, some girls who are they're healthy but they're a little bit bigger and they're happier than some girls who are really thin because it, I feel like it all just starts within, mm -hmm. if that makes sense and it's more, if you accept yourself no matter what your flaws are then I feel like you will be happier anyway. Yeah. So do you use the gym, would you say that's sort of like almost a drug or some medicine just to keep yourself e going? Kind of, it used to be my coping mechanism mm -hmm. when I was losing a lot of weight but now it's more for like I enjoy 
going and I enjoy the endorphins and before it'd be like oh I haven't gone to the gym today oh I feel really bad but now it's like I go because I want to not because I have to yeah yeah because it became sort of like a religion almost. yeah <laughs> it's like a tight-knit community so like I know everybody in the gym we were all yeah. such close-knit friends and it's more like a hobby more than anything else now Good. Um, so, what is then the next plans moving forward? You've got, I know, the Miss uh, Liverpool. Yeah. Hopefully, then Miss England. What yeah. else? What um, are you thinking of doing? Currently, I'm training for a 10k. Um, so I'm I'm going to well, I'm going to try and run. I don't think I'll be able to do it. <laughs> um, run 5k with eight stone on my back, which is the equivalent of what I lost, to show my journey. Mm -hmm. And then doing a five k without to show how far I've come. Yeah. Um, and I'm donating all the proceeds to the Little Princess Foundation, I think, is the Little Princess Trust, which is basically a charity that um, provides wigs for young people who are going through leukemia, oh. and they give um, and like cancer treatments and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and they give wigs for free, which usually cost over £500 to make because they're custom fitted to mm -hmm. each little girl and I kind of want to dedicate my personal journey in regards to mental health towards these young girls because I know in my situation I could change everything that I wasn't happy about but with losing your hair you can't change that so mm -hmm. I want to kind of dedicate my journey as trivial as it is in comparison to trying to help if I can help one young girl improve her self-esteem and mental health going through such a hard time and that feels so yeah. accomplished <laughs> but still as much as you know you say they're quite different from yeah. you losing weight and someone losing their hair at the same time it is sort of that big effect you did it for the better of yourself yeah they of course can't change you know that. they're not going bold because they want to yeah but by you doing that that's that's great that you are doing it yeah. how are you doing the it's still in the um, You're going to carry one of them green bins that are doing the green <laughs> on front. No. Um, my dad's got a friend who works in the gym and he has 25 kilo weight vests. Right. And I think I think 8 stone is the equivalent to 50 kilo. Mm -hmm. So I've got a backpack with a 25 kilo place as well. So I'm going to try and run it but I don't think that's going to be possible so I think I'm going to walk it. And have then, you done your first run yet or have you still... I did a 5k the other day around the park, it was horrific. <laughs> How long did it take you to do? It took me about 40 minutes. Oh, that's uh, an impressive time for a first time run. Yeah, but hopefully it's in. It's on the 13th of July, so which is mm. about two weeks. Where will that be? Will that be around here or...? I think I'm going to do it down by the dock so the breeze can help me <laughs> <laughs> move along if it's sunny especially. Are the back to back then too? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to try and do them back to back. So which one's first, the 5k or the 10k? I'm going to try and do the 5k with the weight first and then finish off with the 5k without. Try and get the hard bit over with first. Mm -hmm. the, the only thing is, hilariously when you say that, I imagine the one without will still feel like you've got enough. It'll feel like hell. Fatigued. Yeah, but then um, I might do like a little 10 minute rest. Yeah. I might see if my mum will wait there with a KFC or something to give me a bit of a pick me up at the, at the halfway so mark. with like a fish and rod yeah. chocolate bar. I was saying that to me mum, get a fish and rod or like a piece of string and attach a donut and I'll be like <laughs> running after it. I did um, the Sunland 5k and the Sunland 10k back yeah. to back. I didn't do any training because I was naive enough to yeah. say, oh yeah, I'm doing It'd be fine. Be fine. Honestly, I died. Yeah. By the 5k, absolutely breeze, did it in great time. Yeah. Uh, the 10k the day after because it was on like 8 pm the 5k, yeah, and the 10k was then 8 am, yeah. So I got like no rest, yeah. I got through about two, three k, and then for the rest of it, I was just absolutely agony. agony. Um, it's all your all your carbs and just ache, and you just want to roll up into a ball and just cry. <laughs> a lot though, from with my um, personal training mm -hmm. for the boxing match, I'm gonna have. Um, a lot of what I've been learning isn't just you know the cardio and the conditioning and you know the lifting heavy to look heavy it's a lot more of the mental Definitely. side of it so your body can do a lot more and it can go on for so much longer but as soon as you say to it oh no I'm tired your yeah. entire body will cut out exactly. so a lot from when you were your training I'll advise you just keep <laughs> breaking the barriers yeah. never stop if you want to go for that 10 minute break you said, I advise take the 10 minute break but don't stop running. Yeah. If anything, 
run at a walking pace yeah or let the walkers walk faster than you're running yeah keep that sort of the motion of the running going because if you stop it's going to be a hell of a lot harder it's hard to, to start going. yeah and then if you do stop then it's a you just you will just mentally yeah. shut off but if you keep sort of pretending and making your body think you're still running yeah but allowing yourself to sort of breathe it's a lot easier yeah. um breathing wise uh, what I've learned to do is slow the heart rate down, especially mm -hmm. with that weight on, it will be fly high. <laughs> yeah. Um, quick deep breath in, and then slowly out for eight seconds, mm -hmm. and then that sort of slows down your heart rate, you get a lot of oxygen yeah. in, and you slowly down the go, and just release the, the heart, and that's good for especially long, long distance mm -hmm. things, because yeah. the 10k will probably be an hour for you, and then the 5k is probably going to be half an hour yeah. on average. But, I mean, probably if more if I've got eight stone on my back. Yeah, probably will be. But you, like you said, if you train as well as you can, then even yeah. with the AK on the back, it'll be a double to do. Yeah. Well, luckily for me, I'm I'm um, quite honoured to have such lovely friends and family. So my dad wants to do the walk with me. Oh. With you, so, so I'm going to get on the scales and try and weigh seventeen stone. Mm -hmm. And he's going to try and get on the scales and weigh seventeen stone as well. I'm going to walk it together, and then a lot of my friends have been like oh I'll come for half the run with you or yeah. so it, it'll probably spare me on a bit more having mm. the mental support there with my friends and family which would be amazing. So is this on the actual run day that they'll yeah. do that? Are they allowed to do that? Yeah because like, I'm, I'm doing it like my own thing it's not like oh, I've right, set it up yeah. myself it's not like an um, proper man. Like a full yeah. event. Oh no that's class that is. I think that's mad the whole do on your back. I never knew you set up your, yourself. I thought yeah. you generally was uh, like, of course, the Sunderland Fact here, what the council sort of organised. I thought it was yeah. a, a version of Liverpool that do it, but it's all set up yourself. No, I've just set up a GoFundMe page and I'm just going to document it on my Instagram <laughs> and just like halfway through, I'm like, I'm dying, but I'm, I'm going to keep going, everyone. Just as long as I help one little girl, and that that's just mm -hmm. makes such a difference. Would you be able to see what? any of the donations or who it goes to or after the money gets sent is that just sort of I hope you know? so I'm, I'm in talks with the charity at the minute so I might bring that up to them and be like mm -hmm. if I've helped one little if I hopefully if I raise 500 pound yeah. I might be able to see who the way it goes to or I might get a little letter or something which would just be amazing like a photo with them with the way yeah oh, that would be class that would yeah. I wish I had it here to donate, but unfortunately I chopped all mine off in lockdown. Does yours not grow quite long though, or quite fast? Or does it like slowly just grow? Like slowly just grow really, because I'm straightening it all the time. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I don't mind just grow full, so I don't know how long it takes if you straighten it. Right, so yes, I think we'll uh, leave it there. Good luck for everything that you're all going to do. Thank you. And by all means, please go check the links out in the description and help her out. <laughs> <laughs>